Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And yes, today I'm going to be putting together my new gaming and VR computer. It's actually been quite a while since I've put together a computer for myself. Uh, the last one I built was probably my Haswell eBay system that I've been using as my primary gaming, VR, photo, and video editing computer for the past couple of years. So it's about time. And honestly, if Henry Cavill can be Superman, can be Geralt of Rivia, and also find time to put together a sweet gaming PC, I think I can get off my butt and do so too. Now, this isn't going to be a how-to or a tutorial walkthrough because uh, everyone's configurations are different based on their needs and price points and what's available on the market today. Uh, and my configuration is unique in the sense that I've been accumulating a lot of these parts for the better part of a year. Uh, during this lockdown, uh, some of these parts have been pretty scarce. A lot of people are building computers out there and I've been kind of picking and choosing components uh, for an Intel-based system, an i9-based system that I've been specking out and waiting for prices to fall uh, before picking up those pieces. Uh, so I will be using some components that may not be what people out there would be choosing if they're specking out a completely brand new system using the latest generation of technology. Um, so I'm using Intel 9th Gen 9900K, as well as then the motherboard that goes with that. Uh, it's an ASUS Z390 system, their E-based motherboard. Uh, and also on the GPU side, I'm using NVIDIA's uh, 2070 Super. So I know there may be new products right on the horizon, um, but I'm using what's available for me now, and it's still going to be great for my needs. But there are also components for this build that are going to be evergreen that will work fine for any system you're building, whether that's the case, the storage, the power supply, or the memory. But let's put all the pieces on the table, get everything together, and get to building. So first things first, I definitely did entertain the idea of keeping on this Henry Cavill building a PC cosplay for the duration of the build. It is Comic-Con this week after all, but I got real sweaty real fast inside this borrowed muscle suit. And I have no idea how anyone could build a computer with this amount of heft. Uh, so props to Henry Cavill up front. I'm gonna run through the parts I chose for this build and how they fit together and my specific order of operations, which may differ from yours, but this is uh, how I wanted to build this PC to make it really as clean as possible. One of the goals I had for this was to be able to do some proper cable management and hide away some excess cables uh, so it looks good when I'm looking through the window of the case. Speaking of the case, I chose a fractal design, Define R2. Now, uh, I got a lot of recommendations on Twitter for fractal design, and they have a wide range of PC cases. I like the R2 because one, it was available, and it's just an extremely spacious case. I'm not gonna be able to maximize it because I'm not using a full-blown custom uh, water cooling solution, but I love having this much volume on the inside of the case to build in, uh, as well as to fit like this uh, CPU cooler. It's also a pretty wide case, a little over nine inches wide, which is an inch wider than uh, previous PC cases I've used, but that extra space uh, allows me to do a lot of the cable management and gives me more breathing room behind the motherboard to tuck those cables away and has all these, uh, these open ports to, to wire around the motherboard and get, the, get to the PSU, get to uh, the drives that you may have stored in the cages, uh, and I really enjoyed building in this case. In terms of order of operations, I went with a pretty traditional path, put the CPU on the motherboard first, uh, and then put the motherboard in the case first before installing the CPU cooler. Uh, and that's because I wanted to make sure I could do all the proper wiring and also have the proper placement for a radiator plus the fans. And it gets a little unwieldy if I have the CPU cooler mounted on the CPU first and then move that whole apparatus into the volume of 
the case. Uh, save things like RAM and graphics card close to the end of the build because those are so easy to slot in and I want to make sure that I had the power cables and all the data cables and the fan cables wired first. Uh, and then things like the SSD, that's really easy just to screw in um, as well as mount into the case for my SATA drives. Uh, did the power wiring last? Because that's just where the bulk of your cabling comes in. And here I'm using a Corsair 850 modular power supply. And with this fractal design case, uh, I can wire all of that um, through the back of the system and pop out just where they need to be to plug into, for example, ATX power or CPU power. For my CPU, I mentioned I had an Intel 9th Gen 9900K uh, to build with, and I don't want to get into the weeds of AMD versus Intel. Uh, in this video, obviously, there's a lot of competition out there, uh, but um, I like the high clock speed of this CPU. It goes up to five gigahertz on turbo, uh, just out of the box without overclocking. And most games favor clock speed over cores and threads, so I'd prefer the extra clock speed here. And of course, it's a desktop CPU, so I don't mind uh, the power efficiency on this 14 nanometer process. And honestly, if I had been picking a new CPU today, I'd take a look at what's out there, but probably would have ended up on a 10th gen Intel equivalent of this, the 10900K for those two extra cores, if I didn't already have this 9900K from last year waiting to be built. And with that processor, that determines which motherboard chipset I'd be using. And so here I'm using an ASUS Z390E motherboard. Uh, I like the ASUS motherboards for their feature sets, you know, plenty of USB ports. You got two M.2 slots here for storage. I'm going full ATX. And you have all the I.O. for the case's front panel connectors. There's also built-in video out if I wanted to troubleshoot, have any problems with my GPU. Uh, and the built-in overclocking functionality is something I've always liked, and that's something I'll be doing here. For the CPU cooler, I stuck with ASUS as well. Here I'm using a Ryogen 2 40. Uh, in the past, I've used the Corsair water cooling uh, CPU solutions, and here is one to stick with the same brand. Um, you know, this one has a bunch of flashy addressable lights that I'm not really in need of, but the radiator here is paired with two 2000 RPM Noctua fans, which have been very well reviewed for their performance and also quiet operation, which is a plus for what I'm going for in this build. The Ryzen 240 has a lot coming out of it, not just for the tubing for the radiators, but also for the fan connectors, as well as a USB connector, because there's an OLED screen here. And so cable management is a little bit tricky here, and it's also one of the reasons I installed the CPU cooler first and got all the cables wired away before putting in my RAM. And here I'm using Corsair's Vengeance LPX at 3.2 gigahertz. It's pretty standard DDR4 RAM. Uh, latency here is C16 uh, because that's what was available and basically performs the same as you know C14 latency at 2.8 gigahertz. Um, and uh, I went for 64 gigs of it here because, well, I am a Chrome user. It's about 250 bucks for 64 gigs of DDR4 these days. And that is a component that is in a little bit short supply as so many people are building PCs these days. For storage, this is a place where I wanted to invest some money in some speed and capacity. So I went with Samsung's 970 Evo. It's an M.2 SSD that does take advantage of PCIe lanes and speeds. And it's super, super fast. It's uh, not my first M.2 stick that I've used, but the past systems I've built, I've only used a 256 gig M.2 drive, and that just didn't prove enough for Windows, as well as my essential applications, as well as all the files I keep on my desktop. Uh, so here I went with a terabyte and it's surprisingly cheap. I found this for under $200, um, which I'm gonna pair with a couple other uh, SATA SSDs as well. 
This is an all SSD system and I had two Seagate SATA SSDs I was saving for this build. And I really like that for this case, uh, those can be mounted front and center right above the power supply and not tucked away in a cage. And it's a really nice placement for it. The drives are mounted on these plates, which you unscrew from the back of the chassis. Uh, and then they present really well. They just look cool and it also allows for some uh, really nice cable management because you can go right to the PSU and right to the motherboard for those SATA cables and tuck everything uh, away behind the case. For the graphics card, I went with NVIDIA with the GeForce RTX 2070 Super, also from ASUS. And this is another case where, you know, you could be probably better off waiting for Ampere to come out. And we don't know when those cards are going to drop, maybe a month or two out, or uh, what that pricing is going to look like. But if you're building a system today, uh, this is a pretty sweet spot uh, for price and performance at $500. It's only about 10% slower than the 2080 Super, but costs a much less. And the performance is pretty close to that of the original RTX 20. 80. So it's gonna be great for desktop gaming, 4K gaming, and of course for me, uh, VR headsets. One thing I really liked about working with this graphics card also is that it has some LED lights above each PCIe power port indicating whether you've plugged in your power cables properly, which helps with troubleshooting and for me helped in this case specifically because I did have one PCIe cable not completely plugged in and I was able to identify which one with that light. All in all, this was an incredibly enjoyable build. I don't have many complaints. If I wish for any things to be changed, it would be, for example, I wish I had better access to the power supply in the case to plug in those modular power cables at the end. Um, like access under, from underneath the case would be great. Uh, right now you can pop off the front and remove a plate to get in there, but that's a little bit of a hassle. Uh, the front panel connectors are also nicely tucked away right out of the box, but that you USB Gen 2 cable, the USB-C Gen 2 cable is a little bit short, so it's a little bit of a tight fit. Uh, thankfully, it worked well for this configuration. After finishing the build, I installed Windows 10, migrated files from my old computer, and installed my essential applications. And this system, first of all, is extremely quiet. Even with those five fans, it's just, you can hear it actually in this clip, the difference between the sound of my old PC and this new one. how loud the systems are, are just night and day. And the system is super fast. For a video we published this week, a 22 minute video, I encoded it and 22 minute video only took about three and a half minutes in Adobe Media Encoder to encode a 1080p H.264 video. And that's thanks to NVIDIA's hardware accelerated encoder um, and probably the combination of that and working off of the PCIe SSD. Uh, and so I'm extremely pleased with the performance so far. Um, haven't booted up any VR games yet, but that's my next step. Uh, and I've been just very, very happy with the whole build process because that's what this is all about. I mean, there's performance and there's configuration and everyone's gonna have a different solution and different needs and different budget. But the important thing is to be happy with the actual build, not be frustrated and not have to go through a ton of troubleshooting, which I thankfully did not have to here. The only thing I might change uh, is later on in my up trade up for an Ampere card by the end of the year. I can't wait to see what price and performance looks like for those. But thanks for following along with my assembly and build of my new gaming and editing system. Would love to know what you put in your system and uh, what you recommend. Please post in the comments below and I will see y'all next time.